Howdy, y'all. Howdy, y'all. Welcome back. Have you ever heard of the Second Empire? Honestly, this was something that really intrigued me just by the title alone. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Second Empire architecture. Now, in the vast history of the Americas, both North and South, we often are met with substantial evidence of pre-existing cultures which not only existed in pre-colonization America, but these cultures actually thrived in the area, with many of these mysterious societies seemingly paving the way for the vast migration to the New World, which occurred after the 15th century. The current narrative as a whole seems to ignore certain aspects, certain evidence, which would suggest a vast majority of the major cities in the Americas already existed in some capacity amongst the vast populations of what are referred to today as the indigenous people. The extent of these cities is often debated. From wooded sites with little architecture used for retreat, hunting, fishing, and trade, which developed into the massive cities centuries later, or vast mound cities that were interconnected over acres of land, which seemingly disappeared as the modern cities were constructed directly on top, to the mysterious cities of myth and legend, which certain indigenous groups as well as certain settlers swore to be true to exist, but remain unfounded. We have a vast assortment of hearsay when it comes to the earliest recorded history of most major cities in America. If we entertain the theory that perhaps a more advanced system of trade and therefore a more advanced form of society was occurring in ancient America, we must also then begin to entertain the thought that the architecture, the superior and advanced architecture which seemed to line the old world America, these buildings which lack a proper narrative, could be associated to different cultures that many centuries ago shaped the infrastructure of America. To the historical narrative, we look to the time period directly after the Civil War. The Civil War, for all intents and purposes, reshaped the many cultures who called America home. For starters, this was one of the first major conflicts where we see full-scale destruction of entire cities for seemingly no purpose other than demonstrating power and possibly erasing history. We certainly have other previous conflicts around the world where we see strategic destruction of certain buildings and certain idols. However, the American Civil War appeared to be the precursor for the type of battle to be fought in these wars going forward. All of this, for lack of a better term, transformed America. If we can identify a form of unified culture which pre-existed the 19th century in America, we can almost guarantee that during that time period of the Civil War, the last aspects of this culture would have been erased from the timeline. This removal of a unified culture would have been done behind the scenes. And according to this theory, and again, this is just a theory, this would have occurred not on the surface, not written about in the newspapers, or as a direct conflict or an interest of the public, like in North versus South, but rather those surface conflicts that were written about would have been used as the auspices to change the rules of society. It's difficult to explain, but during the mid-1800s, we have an explosion of mental hospitals, for example, and insane asylums appearing all around the world with the largest concentration of them being in America. Many of these early asylums appear like castles, often standing as the largest and most elaborate building in their respective town or city, with furnishings seemingly made for royalty. And all of these asylums were full. We're told basically society had divided so much by the mid-1800s between wealthy and poor which the Civil War did little to quell, that after the war, the poor citizens and the newly free citizens without any wealth were reduced to living in the streets. Eventually, the poor were rounded up in every state and moved into these asylums, sometimes called at that time almshouses, but essentially they functioned like luxury prisons. The children of the poor and those who were committed into these asylums then became orphans, often taken from their families. We also have thousands of castle-sized orphanages, which appear on the American timeline like clockwork in the mid-1800s. These orphans became the new workforce, sold as indentured servants and adopted throughout the nefarious states using the orphan trains, which traveled throughout America. 
in this theory of an ancient advanced society in America, often labeled as Tartary, we are told basically everything that happened in the mid-1800s occurred as the last bastion of this society, which was once worldwide, had retreated to America, or possibly had used America as their home base of sorts for many centuries before their land was invaded. Either way, according to this theory, again a theory, we have a highly sophisticated cast of people residing in America many centuries ago, who essentially introduced the world to many new things throughout time, whether it was tobacco, or ball sports, or steam engines, or airships, to harnessing electricity, to the big one, photography. The concept being, nearly everything we have today was trickled down to us through hundreds of years from a more advanced source. In this theory, that source is a unified previous culture, which resided in America, with the Civil War in this theory being the idea of removing the last pieces of this history of the united culture. The wars and the revolutions of the mid-1800s was then, according to this theory, followed by World War I, which destroyed what remained of this culture that either existed or had fled to Europe. And then World War II, which looked to quell the Axis powers who had rediscovered the truth and technology about the previous culture. Again, this is all just a theory, but we do have the countless revolutions of nearly every major world power, including a second American revolution, if you'd like to look at the Civil War that way, occurring one after another in the mid-1800s. It's as if we were watching the dominoes fall. Which ties me very nicely to what I want to share with you in today's video. Besides the concept and theory that I just presented, it's also good to dive into these outlandish ideas with a sense of understanding and having the ability to tie the current narrative to the concepts that we discussed. If everything we just mentioned, the amalgamation of ideas, created this Tartarian empire or an idea of one, being the first great empire, or the first unified empire, which somehow existed either behind the scenes or existed amongst the elites, but was seldom discussed amongst the common folk, possibly during the mysterious dark ages that occurred in Europe, when whatever this culture truly was crossed the sea ending up in America. According to this theory, this is why, during the dark ages, we have little written history in the most important cities of Europe, but on the other side of the pond in America, we have vast indigenous history, both written and oral tradition, which occurred during these exact same dark age years. It's as if, elaborating on this theory, the technologically advanced and unified group, if you want to call them Tartarians, they left Grand Tartary or Eurasia and brought their talents to America. The first empire in America would then, by terms of this theory, be these Tartarians. So who would be the second empire? The Inheritors. Again, this is all just a theory, this is a hypothesis, but did you know that a lot of the old world American architecture that we've looked at throughout the last two years of my videos is often categorized as the short-lived Second Empire style? From 1865, or the year the Civil War ended and Lincoln had lost his life, we're told America's desires shifted dramatically and with the new mindset of industry, a brand new style of architecture called Second Empire Architecture began to arise in America. According to this theory, the Second Empire buildings could be the ones that were inherited and founded by our forefathers, quite literally founded, usually under a good bit of dirt in need of a proper wash. The current narrative tells us Second Empire is based off the Second French Empire, and all of the architecture we have seen and will look at in this video are considered to be French Revival. 
However, we're told by 1870, nearly every American government building and most of the wealthiest architects were constructing exclusively with the Second Empire style. Which makes it even more interesting, some would say revealing, that by the year 1900, Second Empire architecture had fallen out of fashion. By World War I, nearly all Second Empire architecture was purposefully destroyed or torn down in America, and by World War II, it would be shocking to find a Second Empire building being built, or still standing, or being renovated. But what does all of this mean? If you think like a normal person who loves the college textbook, it means Second Empire style became obsolete, and obviously new, modern, steel buildings were more affordable and looked better. However, if you're like me, and you read between the lines, and you enjoy entertaining theories of what the world could have been, then the second empire followed the first empire, which could mean that the first empire was the Tartarian Empire, and the buildings were renovated, and not demolished, and they became known as the second empire, essentially a cheeky way for the powers that be to leave a little symbolism, as we know they love to do. Basically, we wiped out whoever created the first empire or the Tartarian, the massive old world buildings founded throughout America, and once the creators, the original creators of those buildings were gone, we were able to come in as colonists, as Europeans, and basically take over these buildings, slightly renovate these buildings, and rewrite a new history for these founded buildings. Essentially, a centuries-long struggle occurred in this theory between the First Empire, or the Tartarians, basically technologically and emotionally advanced individuals who supplied the knowledge and shaped society against those who looked to covet the knowledge, hide the teachings, and keep the advancements of the world secret to use them to control the lower classes. Essentially, it was a battle of good versus evil. Some may say a battle of gods versus demons. It's the classic tale that we see told 1,000 times over. But essentially, from where we stand, we have no idea how to know who was on the right side of this. Many in the historical circle would assume if there was an advanced ancient civilization, then that civilization must have been benevolent seeking to teach man, to share knowledge with man, as in the many creation myths and legends of a vast number of cultures. However, there's also the possibility the ancient advanced culture used this technology for centuries, for millennia, to control mankind and to keep us dumbed down from their tactics. It could have easily been a caste system with the first empire or the Tartarians at the top, and the elites, or the kings and the queens, the religious leaders, reporting to the Tartarians, with the common person, like me or you, having no idea that the Tartarians even existed. What we do know is what we see in the early 1800s, what we see in the first photographs of America in the 1840s and the 1850s, does not showcase a society which is still in the earliest stages of an industrial revolution. What we see is far more complex, a country, quite literally, from sea to shining sea, with immense and elaborate structures, infrastructure, interlocking countrywide canals, waterways, rail lines, tunnels, both through mountains and aqueducts built using gravity, star forts, moats, submarines, airships, dirigibles, steam-powered engines, wireless trolleys, as well as long-range advanced weaponry, which exceeded anything that was showcased or written about in the decades before the mid-1800s. How and why was all of this appearing in America in the mid-1800s, when, according to the current narrative, all of these technologies stemmed from Europe? But more specifically, they stemmed from the Tartarians, and that's why Europe hit the dark ages. That's why the wealthiest men in the world and the church itself sought desperately to find America. They were searching for the land of the lost Tartarians. The Tartarians essentially had all of the technology with them. According to this theory, the first empire or the Tartarians basically held the blueprints that were used to shape mankind. And it was only through 
the discovery or the rediscovery of the new world that man's renaissance was truly jump-started. So for today's video, we're going to focus exclusively on photographs of buildings founded in America from 1865 through the year 1900 known for their architectural style, the Second Empire. Now, as always, I would love to hear your thoughts and ideas in the comment section down below. Again, this is just a theory, a theory that I've heard mentioned in the comment section of many of my videos and mentioned by many of my subscribers. So I thought for today's video, I would try to flesh out this theory just a little bit more while tying it to concepts from the current narrative. However, I'd like to end this video with just one more fascinating detail in regards to the Second Empire architecture. The first thing is the Second Empire architecture is often called Early Victorian. However, Second Empire holds its own distinct place in the historical narrative. This is in due part to the architecture itself being tied to the sinister. We're told of the Second Empire architecture that remained into the mid 20th century, it was almost always associated with evil. We're told haunted houses are almost always depicted in the style of the Second Empire. For example, cartoonist Charles Adams designed a typical Second Empire mansion for the home of the Adams family. And also on the TV show, The Monsters, they lived in a Second Empire castle or Second Empire mansion. The haunted house where bats emerge in the opening sequence of Scooby-Doo is a Second Empire mansion. And the house in Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho is also in the Second Empire style. Essentially, all of the aspects of the Second Empire architecture became associated with witches, with Halloween, with all of these legends that themselves are tied to pagan traditions. These pagan traditions were the things that are associated with the Tartarians. So we can see if the Tartarians or if a unified culture did exist, it was being silenced. And I thought that was very interesting, very fascinating that our concept of evil, of haunted houses, of the whole concept of horror movies and things like that, these ideas all seem to be associated with the Second Empire and the Second Empire architecture. And I just thought that was a really interesting tidbit to point out before I chime out on the video. But again, everything today was just a theory, just an opportunity for me to be able to share this concept of the Second Empire and these photographs of the Second Empire architecture with you. As always, I want to hear your thoughts down below. And I'd like to know, do these buildings look familiar to you? Obviously, some of them should. They're major historical sites at this point. But do they remind you of other buildings that we've looked at in my previous videos? Do they look similar? I believe the end of this video will open your eyes. And I can't wait to hear what you have to say in the comments down below. Thank you all for being part of my channel as always. Like, share, and subscribe if you feel like it, and God bless all of you. Thank you again. Cheers, y'all.